Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at a um, very easy stepper card and I will give, put a link down below in the, in the bit underneath, um, a link to the other stepper card I did, but this is a magical way of doing it. We've got an A4 piece of card and we're going to score at two and a half, five, 10, 15, 22 and a half. So I'm going to put that one side for the moment. And we're just going to Constantina up those folds and make sure that we burnish down each time. I love this way of doing stepper cards. There are so many ways you can go wrong if you're trying to cut it all out of um, one sheet. Now, there's our basic fold which we're going to be working on today. But I just wanted to show you that if we bring in an extra A4 sheet, and I'm just going to do this roughly, I could cut down through there and I could make, see if I can tip this up, I could make a centre stepper card. I could make a stepper card to the left, a stepper card to the right, just purely by gluing them into place on the back and on the front. What if I chop this down through the middle? This is just to show you, and I put one on there, one on there. I've now got a step card with a lovely area to display items in the middle. Okay, so today we're looking at a full step card. Right. I have printed myself off four copies of um, a scene. It's just a woodland scene. And I'm going to cut that out. I've printed them so that it is A5 size. So I will put all the measurements up as usual. All four prints, I've made the same size. I could have prepared this in advance. I just wanted to see you to see how quickly it can be done. So the first one I've got, I want to stick to this back panel. Now, the reason I've gone for A5 is because when that's done, I know it will go in um, a normal envelope. OK, so I know I'm obliterating part of the um, design, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put double sided tape on the back here. If you don't want to do so many layers, you can make this the first one inside. Right. So I'm going to take that now and I'm placing that onto the back. So that is the biggest size I can go to. I'm going to take my next picture. Check there's just one there. Just 
it's roughly going round at the moment. There we go. Right. Now, when I look at my picture here, I've got a natural horizon there. I've got a natural fence across here and I've got this grass area here. So I can see that there's different layers in my um, picture. So what I'm going to do now, I can see here there's a natural bit. So I'm going to wiggle all the way around. I can choose which trees I live it, leave in. And just wiggling your scissors gives you a more natural effect than a straight line going across. Right, so I now have another tree line. Okay. So I'm going to put double-sided tape along the bottom of that. A couple of layers. And I can take this now, drop it into my next piece, line it, line it up. Like that. Now, if I stand that up, you can see that we're building up another tree line. Now, my next line is this fence right but it's re it really needs to be a little bit higher because the fence has disappeared down behind here so on the next one i can just picture cross right i am not taking this bottom bit off at the moment Right, so the bit I wanted was the fence, and then I'm going to come up around this little hill, and I'm just going to go over a few of the bushes. So, down there, down to the grass line, and it slopes down to the fence, and then I can just go along top of the fence. So there's my next layer. Now, if I place this on here, I want to make sure my fence is going to stand up to the, the top of my piece of um, fold here. So I am now going to mark there bring it in slightly and I can see there. You could measure it. It needs to be at least five centimeters. Right, so nobody's going to see this white bit, but it's going to make my scene look really good. So. Yep. Right. Pop it down to the crease. And now if I can lift this up, I can have three layers of my scene. So I've got my background layer, my tree line, my fence line, and this grass here. And I've got this small area here. Well, if I look at my next picture, from here, I want to follow the bottom line of the fence 
come down and come across this bit here. So I'm going to come across my line here, come down to here. I'm coming just under the fence there. And I need to come across there. Let's put double sided across there. So now, without even putting anything else on my um, on my card, right? I've got some little bits here that aren't aligned. So I will take my scissors or my guillotine and just trim off anything that isn't right. Okay. So there are my four layers of my stepper card and I can now add any die cuts I want like a stag or um, some children playing, anything like that. And it's a beautiful card to start with. Okay. So we'll do that one. You then also have all the extra bits left here that you can add features to. So let's have a look if I wanted to add, uh, I want to save that for another idea in a minute. If I wanted to add these as bushes, because it's all the same colouring. Take this. Let's go back to our scene. This is a little bit um, formal, so I'm going to wiggle that a bit more. So you can see that I could add extra bushes in on the side and then just trim down, right? I could put that down here if I wanted that to be an extra bush in the foreground. There's so many bits that you can do. Now, what I want to show you next is what it looks like inside a shadow box card. OK, so I've now prepared my shadow box and there is um, a video tutorial which I will give the link to down below. So here we go. Here's our um, design and I'm simply going to add wet glue to the back. Wet glue does give you a little bit of wiggle room. So press it into there. There's our layers standing up, right? And because it's springy, this will automatically come to the front. So now I've prepared a bit of acetate. Always make sure you've done all of the um, bits you want to do before you apply your acetate. and do check the static on it, particularly if you're using the red liner tape. You can see acetate attracts dust and things. So always make sure you've got nothing trapped inside. So then I'm going to place that onto the front. Now, obviously, you can see 
where the acetate has been fixed. So on the other video, it will show you how to cut your bits here to go around the outside and an easy way of mitering. So I've kept two bits that are complete. Yes, I'm just checking one side has got a texture to it. So I need to make sure that that is upwards. And we're going to the ones that haven't got the mitre on, we're going to fit those first. Okay, so place them onto there. That covers up the fixing of the um, acetate. And the magic of this, because these are the full, full height here, when I put this on, if my mitres are slightly out, then the bit underneath will make sure that everything is filled in. So here's my next one. Fix it onto there. Okay, so that is the finished frame and it's got off, uh, a real sense of depth going through it and that's even without adding any extra embellishments inside. So I'd have liked to perhaps next one put somebody walking down the path, um, perhaps a stag or a deer hiding amongst the, the layers. Whatever suits you, but it doesn't have to be um, a woodland scene. It could be a garden scene, a, land, a seascape with boats in the background. Right. See what ideas you can come up with. But just from um, a simple A4 sheet folded to give you the different heights and that will give you the inspiration. Have a go, enjoy, and God bless you all.